Hi everyone, my name is Brendan Hodek and I'm an instructor at New York Speech Coaching here in New York City. Welcome to episode 8 of Voice Breakdown, the show where we teach you how to imitate some of the most iconic voices. Today we're going to be breaking down a voice that everybody loves, Ray Romano. Deborah, Was that a laugh track? Let's break this voice down. Component number one, the vocal cords. For Ray's voice, most people will need to lower their pitch slightly. There are lower voices than Ray's for sure, but his pitch is still on the lower side. So be sure to drop that pitch. In the past, we have talked about vocal cord compression, meaning how tightly or how loosely the cords are coming together. Ray has a decent amount of compression, making his voice sound very solid and connected. There is very little rasp, breathiness, or noise in his voice. Component number two, the larynx. Because of some later components we'll discuss, your larynx will naturally rise a bit for this voice, but we don't want to purposely raise the larynx. No! His voice does not have a particularly high larynx. In fact, since other components, especially the tongue, will cause the larynx to move upward naturally, try to fight this movement and keep the larynx more neutral. We want the voice to sound less like ah, ah. and more like ah, ah. Component number three, the tongue. If you have watched other voice breakdown videos, you are probably getting real familiar with clenching or flexing the tongue. This is one of the central aspects of Ray Romano's voice. The tricky part is finding the right degree of tongue clench. This is going to require some experimentation on your part and will feel slightly different for everyone. Too much tongue clench and your voice is going to sound like Fozzie Bear from back in episode number three. You sound just like Fozzie Bear! Relax the tongue enough that it doesn't sound like a Muppet, but tense it enough so that it has that distinct Ray-like quality. Not only do we have to clench the tongue, but we also need to pull it back. Just clenching it alone won't do the trick. Feel the tongue sliding backwards as you produce this voice. Ah. Uh... Uh, be careful when articulating that the tongue doesn't move back forward to where you normally have it when speaking. This will take some practice. Component number four, the soft palate. There is definitely some nasal resonance in Ray's voice. We need to drop the soft palate down a bit to allow sound to enter into the nasal cavity. But this can be tricky. When clenching the tongue, pulling it back, and trying to keep the larynx relatively neutral, it might be challenging to let only some sound in the nasal cavity and not have too much or too little. This will be another area that will take some experimentation. Too much nose, and it will sound like Too little, and it will sound like No, you're doing it all wrong! With enough practice, you can get it just right. Uh, uh, yeah, now you're getting it. Uh, this guy's good. This guy's good. Component number five, articulation. Ray Romano is from New York. Yeah, New York. As such, there are a few sound distinctions to be aware of. First off, the oh vowel. You probably know that New Yorkers are infamous for the coffee oh vowel. Ray is no exception. Whenever that vowel comes up, make sure to round the lips a bit and exaggerate it. We don't want to say coffee, but coffee. Another big New York sound to watch out for is the er. Us New Yorkers love to not say er when we should and add it in places where it doesn't belong. If er is at the end of a word, Ray will say uh. Ah, uh, my older brother. My older brother. Oftentimes, he will also do the intrusive R, which means putting the er where it doesn't belong, such as saying idea instead of idea. Component number six, prosody. One thing to note about Ray's inflection is that when he is comically frustrated, all of his voice features become a bit more exaggerated. If he is speaking in a relaxed manner, sometimes there's not even that much of the tongue clench and retraction. But as he gets more intense, so does the clench. Ah! Deborah! No! He sometimes gets higher pitched and has some voice cracks. No! Why? Lastly, his voice will often do these quick drops in pitch on the last syllable or two. 
While it is typical to drop in pitch at the ends of sentences, his tends to be very noticeable, especially because the tongue clench activates a lot during this. Um, uh, I think so. Yeah, I was with my, uh, my son. Deborah, do you want to do that? Uh, yeah, I guess so. Let's recap. Component number one, the vocal cords. We want to lower the pitch slightly and have a good amount of compression. Component number two, the larynx. The larynx is going to want to raise naturally from this voice. And it's okay to let it do so a bit, but we want to fight really raising the larynx. Try to keep it as neutral as possible. Component number three, the tongue. We need to find just the right degree of tongue clench and pull the tongue backward. Component number four, the soft palate. There is definitely some nasal resonance, so lower that soft palate, but just make sure not to have too much nasal resonance. Component number five, articulation. Overdo the aw vowel, make er at the ends of words sound like a, uh, and throw the er in there where it doesn't belong. Component number six, prosody. When he gets frustrated or loud, exaggerate all the features that are specific to Ray. Specifically, make the tongue clench and pull back even more. Uh, thank you for watching New York Speech Coaching's Voice Breakdown, episode number eight. Be sure to check out future episodes of Voice Breakdown, the show where we teach you how to imitate some of the most iconic voices. See you next time. Deborah!